friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead, and today I wanted to talk to you about soap nuts or soap berries. Um, if you've never heard of these, these are a berry that grows on a tree that's native to a lot of Asian countries, and the berry itself contains high level of saponins, and saponins are the things that um, create soap. It's a surfactant that, that helps you clean things because dirt and grime binds to the saponins in this and and in, so then when you wash whatever it is you're washing all that dirt and grime attaches to it and then it rinses away and then you have a clean item and so these have become popular as a natural eco-friendly uh, I guess laundry soap and that's what a lot of people use these for that's how I started using soap nuts and when we lived um, in our old house and had city water that was a little softer. This was a great laundry soap and that's how I used it. But when we moved to the country, our well water here is a little harder and I do not have good results washing my clothes with soap nuts anymore. So I've gotten creative with using these soap berries and found some other ways that I can use them around the homestead. So if you're someone who found yourself with a big old bag of soap nuts that are not effectively washing your clothes and you're looking for some ways to use them, why don't you stick around and I'm going to show you. So as I mentioned, the most common use for soap nuts would be a uh, laundry detergent. Most soap berries or soap nuts come with a little bag like this and what you do is take a handful of the nuts, I always did seven of them, and put them in the bag and then you close it up and then you just literally toss it in the washer with your clothes and you get about three or four loads out of this set of berries and then when you're done you can just dump them into the compost and refill your bag and that is how you wash your clothes. That's what I did for a while and then it started to get kind of annoying. I find the little bag annoying because you always have to like fish it out of your clothes at the bottom of the washer and find it. Back then we were using an electric dryer and this would inevitably end up going through the dryer a couple of times and I would wonder had that ruined my soap nuts and it was just a huge hassle. So I began back then canning soap nut liquid. I'm essentially doing the same thing um, that the soap nuts were doing in the washing machine. I'm just making a concentrated liquid that I could then pour out pre-measured in each laundry load. So I'm going to go through how I did that first and kind of walk you through that process. And then I'm gonna show you how I'm using that soap nut liquid currently. Today we're gonna to be pressure canning our soap nuts in a quart jar. If you're new to pressure canning, I always highly recommend um, pressure canning soap nuts as practice for how to use your canner. A lot of people get a little scared when they first get a pressure canner. They're kind of worried that they're going to mess up and they're going to waste all of the you know, meat or, or produce or whatever it is that they're putting in the jars. And so there is, there is a little bit of a learning curve with using a pressure canner. And so doing something that you're not going to be eating, so it, it's a little less scary, I guess. You're not, I'm not worried about creating an environment of botulism when I'm um, canning soap nuts. It's just going to become a, a soap that we're going to use around the house. So this is a great starter. If you have... A pressure canner sitting in your pantry or in storage and you've been too nervous to get it out why don't you try with something like this and and it's just a good way to get your feet wet this is also how I taught my children how to use the pressure canner because you know if they messed up we weren't out any food we were just out a few soap nut berries which is much cheaper um, um, when you're in terms of loss in the jar so it's a great way to get started let me show you what you're gonna do it's really simple so when I first began canning soap nut liquid, what I would do is just put seven berries in the bottom of the jar and then fill it up all the way with water, put my lid on, and process it that way. It's sort of the same idea as that little bag that I told you about. This had seven berries in it, and I would get four washes out of that. So seven berries then in here would give me four um, loads of laundry worth of liquid and that's what I would do. I would measure this out and just use a fourth of it per load and that worked really well. Um, but now what I try to do since I'm not using this soap nut liquid for laundry per se is I try to make it a little more concentrated. So when I'm going to can these I am going to fill it about halfway up with the berries. I don't really count them. I just kind of fill it halfway and eyeball it. And we're going to fill it the rest of the way with water. 
We're gonna put our lids and our rings on and we're gonna process these for 10 minutes in our pressure canner. I do it at 10 PSI. 10 minutes is uh, long enough to get these to seal. 10 minutes is also long enough to sterilize your jar and um, prevent any kind of bacteria growth in the inside of this with the, the soap nut. So that's why I chose that 10 minute uh, time period. Soap nut liquid can be made just by boiling these soap nuts on the stove and then pouring that liquid off into a container. And you can do that and just have that laundry liquid sitting in your laundry room, but it does go bad, that soap nut liquid will go bad uh, within about a week or two. So you have to store that soap nut liquid if you're not planning to use it in a week or two in the refrigerator. And I don't know about you, I don't really have space in my fridge to have a bunch of soap nut liquid. So that's why we're gonna can this today. It makes it shelf stable and it's just a really easy way to make it because the canning process will actually boil these for us and it's all done and it's ready to go. So I filled my seven quart jars here for one batch in my pressure canner. I filled them all with the berries. Now I'm going to fill them the rest of the way with water and I'm going to leave about an inch head space and then I'm going to put my lids on. One more thing to note, um, if you've followed me for a while, you know I love to do canning. You also know that I do not reuse my canning lids um, from old batches to make new batches of food. I just feel safer using a new lid every time I do a canning project. My one exception though is with canning soap nuts because these are not a food. So I'm not as worried about having a seal failure that could potentially spoil the contents. It's just a great way to reuse the lids from my food canning projects. So whenever I am canning food items and I peel off my lids, I try to save any of the lids that are in good condition for projects like this, also to use to store my dehydrated items in jars on my pantry shelf or to freeze items in canning jars. It's nice to have um, some lids for that. Lids are in shortage right now around the country. They're really hard to come by and when you do get them They're often double or triple the price that they were pre 2020 and so I would never Recommend using brand new lids to can something like soap nut liquid the cost of the lids right now just wouldn't make this um, a cost-effective project you're putting too much into one of these jars so reuse some lids for this that'll save you some money now when you are reusing lids, you want to make sure whatever lid that you use is nice and flat and perfect. This is why it's important when you peel a lid off of your canning jar, you want to pry it off as carefully as possible so that you don't curl up a corner of it or put a ding in the corner of it. If you're, reuse, if you're reusing a lid and it isn't perfectly flat, that's going to compromise your seal. So I'm looking here at some of my lids and I can see where it's very uneven. And so I'm going to get rid of, of these and I'm going to save these for dehydrated jars and, and um, freezing jars and things like that and only use my nice perfect ones. So enough talking. I'm going to go ahead and fill these with water, get the lids on. We'll get these in the pressure canner and then I want to talk to you about what I plan to do with this liquid. So I've started filling up with water and as you can see it will sud up a little bit when you're filling these with water. That Those are the saponins in the berries doing their job. So generally soap nuts do not lather much, but you will get a little bit of a, of a soapy kind of foam on the top here. I'm gonna keep going and filling these. While I'm waiting on the canner to work up the pressure, let me um, just give you a few other pointers. Um, you could potentially add some like essential oils to each jar before you can it and um, I've done that before and you still get like lovely fragrance when you open the jar but high levels of heat do break down those essential oils so it really is best to wait. Um, you can your soap nuts and then when you go to open the jar you can add your essential oils later. Um, so here is a batch that I did last year I think. It was just one that had seven berries in it and it has the liquid. So what I'll do when I open a jar like this with the berries in is I just strain it into a new jar 
so that the berries are left behind and then all I have is the liquid in the other jar. Um, when you open your jar, it has a really fruity smell. It's pleasant. It's not unpleasant, um, but it smells kind of, kind of fruity. And so, as I mentioned, once you open it, you could add some essential oils. If you're using this for laundry, something like a lavender would give it a really good scent. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the other uses that um, for this liquid now and talk about some of the oils that you could put in for those. So let's get into that. One of the first uses for your soap nut liquid is as a shampoo. It is talked about quite a bit as this being one of the greatest shampoos for your hair because in a lot of Eastern medicines and things, these soap berries are thought to be antifungal and antimicrobial. And so if you have hair conditions um, such as a dandruff or something like that, this soap nut liquid is a really good natural way to um, kind of cure that. Also, the berries have really high levels of certain vitamins that are good for hair growth and make shiny and healthy hair. So that is the first use for this. Now what I find is that it's really inconvenient to have a very liquidy. If you'll find this, um, it's, it's just kind of watery. So getting this on your hair as a shampoo <laughs> is kind of difficult. And then on top of that, it doesn't lather. So if you're someone who's used to a shampoo and really getting it soapy and lathery, this is not going to have the same kind of effect. Basically, you, you pour this and kind of work it into your hair. The dirt and the grease attaches to, you know, the soap nut liquid, and then you rinse it out. It's a very different experience. So to get this on your head, the best way to do that is to take a spray bottle and put it in there, and then you can kind of, in the shower, spritz it on your head. Now, I have extremely thick hair. Um, for me personally, this isn't how I choose to use my soap nut liquid. I need something with with a sud to really feel like I'm getting my hair clean. But I do use this on my children, and I've used it um, before and love it. It's a great natural soap. I don't have to worry about them getting the suds in their eyes and stinging their eyes. This is just so much easier. So what I do is I keep this little spray bottle of it, and I can spray their little heads with it and work it in and rinse it out. And that is my first favorite use for this uh, liquid. A second favorite use for the liquid, um, since we're talking about bathing, would be to treat things like um, diaper rashes, um, yeast rashes and stuff in my little tiny babies. So once again, Eastern medicine says this is antimicrobial, antifungal, yeast is a fungus, so therefore if you have your child kind of sitting and playing in the bath and you fill the bathtub with a little bit of this soap um, nut liquid, that's going to help as it gets on the skin and help treat that yeast rash. So um, it's just a really gentle and, and safe cleanser for babies. I often go between using uh, the soap nut liquid for my babies and then I also make a homemade Castile soap that I turn into a liquid and sometimes I'll use that if I need something a little, you know, um, sudsier for them. Or there have been times, too, where I have combined the two to kind of water down the thick liquid castile or castile soap that I make. I can dilute it with a little bit of this soap nut liquid, and that makes a great cleanser for the little ones. It's um, We have an outdoor tub set up right now that I sometimes bathe my babies outdoors, and so I can actually use this soap nut liquid to clean them and then gather that bath water to water my plants and things, and I don't have to worry about the chemicals in the soaps that I'm using or whatever. It's just a nice natural soap. So speaking of plants and uses for this, that leads me into my third use, and that is many of us gardeners know that there are certain pests in the garden that do not like soap. And so the treatment for many of these pests, like aphids, is to spray them with something like dish soap. What is actually repelling the pests and killing the pests in some cases is the saponin content of the soap. So you can get the same effect from these soap nut bear, or from the soap nut liquid that you've made from your berries. Same idea as with the shampoo. You can just fill a little bit and you don't need a lot, especially if you've made it ultra concentrated. I would just fill the bottom of my spray bottle about that full, fill it the rest of the way with water, shake it up, and I would go out in the evening when the sun is down 
and spray all of the leaves of my plants and that will kill um, the aphids and it will um, repel other pests and keep them away from your plants. You could potentially add other essential oils in here that have been proven to be effective uh, against some of those pests, um, things like lavender. Um, if you're having, like right now I'm having a mouse problem in my garden, so I could put a little bit of peppermint oil in this and spray it around and that might help repel some of the mice from eating my plants, things like that. And so you could do that. Now the benefit to using the soap nut liquid in your garden versus other soaps is sometimes when you spray dish soap on your plants, the leaves don't really like that because depending on the soap you're using, the chemicals in it can react with the leaf and they can cause it to curl or to burn. And it's a really <laughs> um, tricky thing because you're trying to get rid of the pests, but in the, in the process of killing the pests, you're actually killing your plant too. So this is a natural way to do that. <clears throat> there are no chemicals in this. It will still, the saponins will still kill the aphids and things, but you're not at risk of burning your plants. So that is a really good way to use up these soap berries. And then speaking of pests, another way you can use a spray, the same spray that you used um, for your plants and for the aphids, you can actually, if you're gonna be out in the woods or somewhere where mosquitoes are gonna be abundant, <laughs> you can actually spray yourself down with this um, soap nut liquid and it is a mosquito repellent. Um, to make it even more effective, there are most companies that sell essential oils have some kind of bug repellent blend and you can put some drops of that in with it, spray yourself down, spray your kids down, and it's a nice um, chemical free, kind of safer uh, option for pest control and, and um, bug repellents for your body, a little healthier. <laughs> All right, another use for your liquid is as a produce wash. So when I get home um, from doing a bulk buy, sometimes I go to like Amish uh, produce auctions or I purchase a lot of bulk um, items from the Amish. Sometimes the things that I purchase are not organic. It's the only option for bulk produce that I have at times. And so when I bring that home, I really wanna sc scrub that produce down to make sure that none of the pesticides and dirt or anything else is left on it before I'm gonna can it. And so um, using a soap nut liquid is a really nice wash for that. You just um, fill your sink with the water, throw your produce in, add some of the liquid and kind of swish it around and then really rinse it off. And this will do a really good job of cleaning that produce. And you don't have to worry about the soap remnants being on it. There's no chemical anything in this. So this is a nice healthy option for that as well. So I'm going to give you some other options for using this. These are things that I've read about that people can do. I personally don't have experience with using any of these items that I'm going to talk about now, but they're just some, some ideas that I could give you that I've read about that I you know plan on maybe trying in the future. So some people actually use this as dish soap. I don't really like it because I don't get a lather, <laughs> but there are people that have good results using it as a dish soap, so that is an option. There are also people who make a dishwasher soap blend out of this, so you could look into that and, and do that for yourself. Toothpaste is another option. You can actually take these berries and grind them down using a Vitamix or, or something um, that would pulverize this into a powder. And then a lot of people add baking soda to that powder with this and they um, make sort of a paste and they brush their teeth with that and it's a nice eco-friendly, um, no chemical added toothpaste. And so that's something if you have extra we, uh, of these berries sitting around, maybe that's something you could play around with and try and see if you like it. I've also heard that the liquid is very good for polishing silver and things like that around the house, so I have yet to try that. I don't really have a lot of silver that <laughs> needs polishing here, but if I did, I would definitely give it a try with this. So really quickly before I sign off here, let me talk to you a little bit about storage of both the liquid and the berries. Um, soap nuts in their plain form like this can store indefinitely. As long as they are kept away from um, moisture, they won't mold or anything like that. So you can just buy these in bulk and add them to your um, pantry or to wherever you keep your cleaning supplies and laundry supplies and these can um, store, they're just a great option. They will, if there is any moisture or a high humidity level in your house, um, they will kind of get a little sticky. 
um, if they do absorb some moisture, but it's not a huge issue. You can still use them if they're sticky and they will be fine. I just keep mine in a bag like this and keep it closed and I put it in my laundry room and that's where I keep those. The um, canned liquid like this is good as long as the seal is good. So this is something you can do in big batches if you wanted to make you know, a bunch of laundry soap at one time or a bunch of um, shampoo at once. You can just can up at several batches and keep them on your shelves and they will be ready to go. Once again, um, I mentioned if you do open the liquid up, once it's opened, you need to use it within a week or two or it will start to smell bad and it will go bad. So if you don't plan to use it, just put it in the fridge and you can keep it there. Um, here we are in zone five for gardening, so we can't keep a soap nut tree on our property. But there are options if you live in a warmer climate, if you're in zone six or higher, there are options for you to keep a soap nut tree on your property. And if we lived in one of those <laughs> environments, I would definitely have one because I think that this is a great option for having a sustainable soap source on your property. Um, and so, yeah. Hopefully you learned something about soap nuts in this and hopefully um, you can see how easy it is to can them. It takes, it took me five minutes to get everything in the jars and in the canner. The hardest part at this point is babysitting your canner and making sure it maintains that pressure. Um, but otherwise, it's a great intro to pressure canning. I highly recommend it. And if you're not on the soap nut train, if you're someone that has soft water, if you have city water, I recommend it for laundry. And even if you have hot, um, harder water, there are so many other options I mentioned in this video that um, these are just a really healthy alternative to keeping chemical laden soaps in your house or using pesticides and things on your garden or on your children. So, yep. If you have any more questions about soap nuts, uh, you can leave them in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, I'm going to finish up this load and move on with my day. I hope you're having a good one, friends. I'll talk to you later. Bye.